Hi, this is Evan Thomason with This Week in Santa Clarita, and today we are at the Farmer's Market, and we're going to catch up with Phil Lantis, who's going to tell us about this exciting new activity in Old Town Newhall. How does the produce here uh, is different than if you went to any market? Well, generally, coming farm fresh uh, means that there's lack, less preservatives, there's less of the things that, that are required to be able to get through the shipping process and display process at a normal grocery store. And we're not knocking normal grocery stores, but what you're able to get direct from the farm is a higher quality, less preservatives, often organically grown. And it gets very tricky with that because there's very tight rules on what you can call organic these days. Um, but basically, you're getting a higher quality and often at a lower price than you can get at the grocery store because the overhead is is the farmer's time and that's about it. So most of these, most of the produce here is actually grown locally and one of the other parts of the benefits is really there's no pesticides. Is that true too? Generally that's true. It's not required for being a certified um, but it, generally there's very minimal pesticides or they're organic pesticides because the farmers are choosing to, to make that choice to um, provide the best quality product. And looking around and you see all the people that are talking to the different vendors, I guess it's a unique experience too because a lot of cases you're talking to the growers about specific varieties of produce. Can you talk about that a little bit? Definitely. Um, one of the advantages of being in direct conversation with the farmers is you can find out what's coming next week, what's coming the week after that, what's in season, what's right at the prime of its season, what's maybe on its last legs or just beginning. So you can actually make choices in terms of what you want to buy based on what's going to be coming out next week and what's coming in season and, and the various varieties and what's good for what uses. And you're talking to the people who really know their products as opposed to, once again, a grocery store where they're getting products and then they're turning around and selling them on mass. You're talking to the people who are, are working every day to ma make the best product possible. And let's talk about um, specifically where we are and why we are where we are. So we're in Old Town New Hall. It's a Thursday and can you give everybody the hours of the farmers market? We run from 3 to 7 and we'll be doing that every Thursday from now till October 30th. And uh, the reason we're in Old Town New Hall is because we're really wanting to um, support the redevelopment efforts down here and, and really bring people out and show the exciting things that the city's doing in Old Town New Hall, you know, with the, the new line, um, line streets, more parking, some of the nice facade work, some of the new businesses that are down here we're wanting to spotlight. So it's really an opportunity to, to invite people to come to Old Town New Hall from across our valley to have a great time in an event and also see what's going on in New Hall. And Thursday is a neat day or a good day too because basically what you're doing is you're getting fresh produce that's ready for a weekend of uh, a whole weekend of cooking and you can do a weekly pro weekly produce or you can just get stuff ready for the weekend. Generally that's the, the case. We also were very conscious of the fact that there is a farmer, farmer's market over at College of the Canyons that's on Sunday and we wanted to work with them. We talked with them to make sure that we weren't stepping on their toes and it works out this way to where you can, like you say, get the produce for the weekend and then on Sunday get the produce for the week up to Thursday. So it really complements each other, keeping the competition down because this town is big enough to support everybody and we want to be a great partner and not step on toes. And Old Town New Hall is a good location in another way because it is right off the 14 freeway so you got a lot of people coming here and basically it's it's sort of a central place in town uh, infrastructure wise and it's also near a major uh, one of the three Metrolink stations that we have here. Definitely accessibility is a key and, and with a lot of people driving um, San Fernando Road and Main Street and Railroad it's a really great option from a visibility standpoint. We do have the Metrolink station right here so if people wanted to come up on the Metrolink it would be very convenient and easy and we just think New Hall is a great place to hold this kind of event. We're wanting to do more events in New Hall and it's just a great opportunity to, to like I say really shine a light on New Hall and the great things that it has. So that's it from the Farmer's Market. I want to thank Phil Lantis. Make sure you head down here every Thursday from 3 to 7 to get your fresh produce. Right now we're going to Alicia Celestine with the upcoming Cowboy Festival. Well cowboys and cowgirls, it's that time of year again. It's time for the 15th annual City of Santa Clarita Cowboy Festival. I'm here at beautiful Melody Ranch with the director of the festival, Mike Fleming from the city's Arts and Events Office. Good to see you again this year, Mike. Good to see you, Alicia. This is becoming an annual thing. I enjoy this. Great. Well, tell us all about this year's Cowboy Festival. Oh, this is going to be a great one. It's our 15th annual, if you can believe it, uh, 15 years in a row. And we're still here, still one of the top three festivals in the United States 
And uh, we just got a great lineup of entertainment and uh, gear vendors and food vendors and celebrity autographs this year. It's a brand new wow. thing. We're bringing in people like Hugh O'Brien and Bruce Botsleitner and uh, people like that. So it's going to be just a great, great weekend. Mention some of the entertainment, which is a big deal here, and I know takes place through both of the days of the festival. Tell us about some of the artists who are going to be here this year. Well, we always like to bring in our perennial favorites, uh, Sons of the San Joaquin and Don Edwards. But uh, one of the things that I've really been pushing for for the last four years is bringing in people that maybe aren't quite as well known, but are just outstanding talents. Uh, we've got a group uh, called the John Moore Band, and John Moore is out of Colorado, and he's a real cowboy. He's a horse trainer. Uh, he travels in the United States and Europe doing horse training clinics, but he's also probably one of the foremost flat pickers, uh, guitar and mandolin, and he's going to make his debut with the cowboy band at, at uh, Melody Ranch this year. I'm very, very excited to see how people are going to enjoy him. And uh, Hot Club of Cowtown, uh, we're so glad to have them back. It's been three years since they've been together. Uh, they toured with Willie Nelson and Bob Dylan, then kind of went their separate ways for a while, and they're back together and they're coming to Melody Ranch. Uh, Cow Bop is another great group. Uh, if you like bebop jazz with a cowboy hat, I know it sounds like an oxymoron, but it's an amazing combination of musical styles. They're going to be here, and the list goes on and on. It's going to be tremendous. It sounds great. I know for me, one of my favorite parts of the festival is the food. I save up all week to eat the peach cobbler. Tell us what people can expect for those two days in the food department. Well, peach cobbler is, is uh, an entity in itself, but it's the way it's prepared that makes it special. Uh, the Cowboy Cultural Committee, they're out of Visalia, California, and they've been coming here, I think, since the beginning. Uh, a bunch of wild men, and they set up their chuck wagon, their Dutch ovens, and the Dutch oven is just a cast iron pot that they do their cooking on and it's over coals. It goes all day long and they fix tri-tip and they fix uh, you know beans and that sort of thing. But what everybody stands in line for is the peach cobbler. They, mm -hmm. That thing cooks all day. It's just got an amazing texture and taste to it. And then uh, they just top it off with that, you know, that cold ice cream on the top and it's just amazing. If it's a little warm that day, you gotta stand in line and wait for that. It's great. It's well worth it. Uh, one of the great things about Melody Ranch is the history of this location and the history of its place in the city. Touch a little bit on that. Well, it started out um, at the turn of the uh, 20th century actually as Monogram Studios and uh, a lot of filming took place here. Uh, you know, a lot of the silent films before they brought in sound and then uh, it uh, continued through the 30s and 40s and then Gene Autry bought it. Everybody knows Gene Autry and he kept it as a filming venue as well. And also, this is where he kept his horse champion, and it was kind of his second home. Uh, and eventually, uh, there was a fire here that destroyed a lot of the main street that people will see uh, when they come to the ranch, which is spectacular in itself. Uh, so it sat there basically, you know, not really as a working movie ranch for a while. And then the Values A family, who have been so gracious to let us come in here for years, uh, they came in and they took all the old photographs of the ranch. They still have the cement footprints of these buildings and from scratch they built, rebuilt the main street of Melody Ranch and for any of you movie fans out there if you ever watched uh, Gunsmoke or any of those old great movies back then that's what you're going to see. It's going to be a time travel. You come out here and you step back into history. It's amazing. I know the city of Santa Clarita has a lot of history in the western cowboy genre. Touch a little on that as well? Oh, well, it goes back even beyond uh, when it became uh, a state. Uh, of course, the Californios and uh, the Spaniards came up here and settled it uh, as, as far back as 1769. And uh, there was a mission up here in the late 1700s. And then there was uh, land grants that were given out by the Spaniards. And then, of course, they uh, turned over to the Mexican government. But we've got the tradition of the Californios and the Vaqueros. And then I remember coming out here to the Santa Clarita Valley in the early 70s. And uh, aside from the nucleus of the town, you just drove out a little ways and you saw cattle ranches and farming. And so there's a real, wet, a, a real rich Western heritage here. Mike, tell us how people get here. Well, it's uh, actually really simple. 
Uh, they don't come directly to the ranch. That uh, needs to be understood. They just uh, go directly to our shuttle site, which is at 13th and San Fernando. It's just less than a mile away from here. They park there for free. Uh, they get on a shuttle bus for free. They come all the way to Melody Ranch, and the shuttle bus drops them off here. And once they get here, what can they expect to see? Well, a whole new world opens up. Uh, as I said earlier, they step back in time. Uh, they can walk the main street of Melody Ranch, and all those buildings that you've seen in all the old films actually have interiors as well. So we have vendors in there. There's a jailhouse, and our local sheriffs are in there, and they, they like to play with people in there. And, but vendors who are selling everything from artwork to uh, cowboy gear and uh, bits and spurs and uh, jewelry and that sort of thing. We have five different stages throughout the ranch, four alone, just on, on uh, Melody Street Main Ranch. Uh, so you can actually uh, just move from one area of the ranch to the next and practically take half a day just to get all the way to the other end. It's a 22-acre ranch when all is said and done, so there's a lot of ground to cover, which brings up a very important thing. Now, when you come out here, you don't want to be wearing the high heels. Uh, you probably should wear comfortable shoes. Uh, wear a hat like this or something similar. It keeps the sun uh, out of your, uh, off your skin and stuff. But, uh, and dress cowboy. That's half the fun. When you get out here and you'll see everybody dressed up like they're cowboys and cowgirls, and that's part of the whole time travel experience. It, it, it's just a wonderful way to spend your day. But um, the entertainment, you have all the vendors out there. We have street entertainers. We have guys doing rope tricks. We have living history. Uh, we have some blacksmiths who demonstrate how they, uh, how they forge their uh, ironworks and all of that. We have an area for kids where they can learn how to uh, make ropes. Uh, they can actually uh, rope a little mechanical steer head that shoots out. So it's just one thing after another. It's a great way to spend your day. It really is a great day for the whole family. How do people find out more about the Cowboy Festival? Oh, it's pretty simple. Uh, if you're a web person, you would go to cowboyfestival.org, and you can click on that, and it's almost a virtual tour of who's coming and, and what's going on and the schedules and all of that. It also allows you to buy tickets online. But if you're a person who would rather work over the phone, uh, you call 661-286-4021, and you can order tickets at the phone, uh, over the phone, excuse me. Uh, but also, if you're one of those people that puts it off to the last minute, you can just uh, show up at the shuttle site, you can buy your tickets that day, get on the bus, and come on in and have a great time. Great. Give us the days and the time again for the festival. At Melody Ranch, April 26th and 27th right around the corner. The city of Santa Clarita celebrated its 19th annual Arbor Day event this year at Central Park and also celebrated its 18th year being awarded a Tree City USA. Let's take a look back at the events that happened today and all the different opportunities volunteers had available to them, including planting trees around Central Park. We Urban forester Robert Sartain explains why Arbor Day is so important to the city of Santa Clarita. Well, today is our 19th annual Arbor Day, and it's a, a big day for the city of Santa Clarita to celebrate all the wonderful benefits of trees and uh, to celebrate Arbor Day. And what's happening at this event? Well, there's all kinds of things happening at this event. It's a community event. We try to bring everybody in the community together. Um, we have 60 plus trees that we're planting to help you know, create a better environment. Uh, that involves a lot of the community volunteers signing up. They get to work their hours. They get to know what it's like to plant a tree. There's kids events. We have a lot of environmental exhibitors. Uh, we have uh, different forest agencies and municipalities that represent uh, the urban forest and the environment. And why does the city put on an event like Arbor Day? It's going on for 19 years now, so what makes this event important? One of the reasons we put on the event is because it's a requirement to become a Tree City USA. Um, and this year we got our 18th consecutive Tree City USA award. Um, that's a requirement for the National Arbor Day Foundation. But overall, it's just a really feel-good event that we can start to share uh, the benefits of trees and what they provide to our community. 
Council member Marsha McLean explains why Arbor Day is such an important event for the city of Santa Clarita. This is a wonderful event for families and kids. We have the Placerita Nature Center here. You can actually come down and pet, pet a snake. We have the Audubon Society here. They have parrots and macaws and other birds. They have wonderful literature for you. The kids can paint a little birdhouse. We have drawings for people to win wonderful prizes. There are several vendors here. We have the Sierra Club and other vendors here, woodworking. It's just a fantastic day. And why is an event like Arbor Day so important to the city of Santa Clarita? I think it's important to our city for the residents to have a, a place where they can come and get in touch with nature. This is a wonderful thing. You can pick up bags of compost for your garden. Um, you learn how to have your garden be an ecologically sensitive backyard. It's a learning experience, plus we're always looking for family events where kids can come and do hands-on things in order to learn about our city and nature, and this is perfect for that. Now let's catch up with some local residents and find out why they chose to volunteer for this year's Arbor Day event. Daniel, what brought you out to Central Park today? Actually, I'm here with my uh, church youth group kids and uh, one of our officers were looking for a community service thing to do and then we found Arbor Day so we're here and I'm excited. What made you want to volunteer? Well I'm a youth group teacher so I actually had to come here but after just seeing like you know all the community come together and just working as one and just giving back to the community I think it's just amazing and it's just a bonding time it's great. And what was it like today volunteering? What'd you do? Well we actually planted uh, four trees and it was actually exciting. I never knew how to, you know, how to plant trees, but you know, we learn, and something that you know I'm gonna remember, you know, for a while. Well, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at the events that unfolded at Arbor Day this year. If you didn't get a chance to volunteer and are interested, take a look. The event will be back in April of 2009. The City of Santa Clarita hosted its third annual Evening of Remembrance on Wednesday, April 16th from 7.20 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at the Youth Grove in Central Park. The Evening of Remembrance is meant to remember Santa Clarita Valley youth who have died in traffic-related incidences, as well as raise community awareness about the importance of safe and responsible driving. The program's highlight is the reading of the names of the 71 Santa Clarita Valley youth who are currently represented at the Youth Grove. Community leaders, including Mayor Bob Keller and the council member, Frank Ferry, spoke at the event and encouraged both youth and adults to empower themselves to stop the trend of needless tragedy. The speakers pointed out that reckless driving, driving while preoccupied with cell phones and other gadgets, and driving under the influence are all dangerous situations that can be avoided if we make it our responsibility to be involved. The Half Acre Memorial features individual pillars that mimic cut tree stumps, each representing a life cut short on the road. The pillars surround a central monument featuring the No More Vow, urging the community to know more about safe driving habits and a pledge that no more young lives will be lost from drinking and driving or from reckless and irresponsible choices. Hello, I'm Laura Ulrich with This Week in Santa Clarita. Today we're here at the Santa Clarita Aquatic Center for a special interview with Howard Chenaw, a regular at the Aquatic Center who's here to share his inspirational success story with us. Howard, please tell us how it all began. Hi, it began around uh, 14, 15 months ago. I went back uh, to uh, North Carolina, South Carolina for my son's anniversary uh, party. He got engaged and um, when I was there, I was an old fat guy. And uh, I decided then so I wouldn't embarrass him and his uh, fiance at that time to uh, do something with my life and get it back on track and try to lose some weight. What um, interested you in coming to the Aquatic Center? How did you hear about it? Well, one of my friends uh, started it uh, probably two years ago and said that they have started their routine and workout and uh, it helped them strengthen their body and lose some weight. Well, okay, so I decided since I started a food program and decided to uh, do some exercise, I decided I'd better do what I can do. I have very bad back, and this actually helped my back and my body lose um, inches and tone my body up as I lost the weight. That's great. So what classes do you take here at the Aquatic Center? 
I take a, an exercise program in the pool, and I have several uh, um, instructors that are very good, and one of them is Gonzalo, and he is the one mainly that pushes you to uh, work your body the right way, and it's, uh, it's a program that really works. I think all people, even senior citizens, which I am, are young people that have some uh, body problem or leg problem can work out in the pool, and it's a non-impact and really does help. And how often do you visit the Aquatic Center? Well, I started out just three times a week, and now I make it at least five times a week. My average is two, two and a half hours a day. Uh, I'm to an extreme where it helps me in a way that, since I've lost a lot of weight, that uh, I don't have to have surgery and have the skin removed, which was my goal to look really halfway decent or halfway normal. The idea is that if you work the program the way they teach you here, they teach it for an hour, and it is a very extended program which helps a lot of people. And that, but I went to the little extreme, to the extra. My wife said I became too uh, compulsive to come here, and which I did because I knew it worked. Well, it definitely worked for you. Can you tell us how much weight you have lost in the last 18 months since you started your diet um, regime and your exercising here weekly at the Aquatic Center? I lost over 200 pounds. I was a 64-inch waist, and now I'm a 36-inch waist. Um, I have no had no surgery. Uh, what you see is what I am. It's just uh, I do. Uh, I don't. I cannot still do a lot of hard exercise because of my back, but the pool doesn't hurt me and that's what I do it and I do it with the aquatic exercise. I'm here now with Gonzalo, the manager of the 50 meter pool at the Aquatic Center. How are you today Gonzalo? I'm doing well. Yourself Laura? I'm doing great. Good. It's great to see you here. Nice. Um, we actually caught you earlier teaching a class, Correct. right? Yes. What yes. Was that the same class that Howard is in? Yes, uh, that's one of the classes that we are, one of our most popular classes we have water exercise and uh, it's kind of like aerobics in the water. You know people have this stereotype of uh, be, water exercise being for the older crowd, but it's a tough workout. You know, every time I get in there, it's a, it's, I get a good hard workout with that. So it's really good. It's really good. That's awesome. And what other kinds of classes do you offer if anyone's interested in, you know, signing up for the summer classes? Uh, our most popular classes actually are uh, lessons for the kids. So um, if you're going to sign up for those, make sure you uh, do it online. Uh, May 13th, I believe, is the register, to, to register online. But one of the popular classes, I mean, they get filled out pretty quick. You, you see hundreds of kids in the pool, and they're just, it just seems like they're enjoying it. So it's pretty much teaching kids how to, how to swim and how to be safe in the water. This concludes another fun-filled episode of This Week in Santa Clarita. Make sure to check your mailbox for the Summer Seasons Catalog with the Aquatic Center classes in them. I'm Laura Ulrich with This Week in Santa Clarita, and we'll see you next time. Tickets are now on sale for five days of cowboy culture and excitement. This year, the best performers in Western entertainment will help celebrate the City of Santa Clarita's 15th Annual Cowboy Festival, February 23rd through the 27th, with several events throughout the Santa Clarita Valley, including the Cowboy Festival being hosted at the historic Melody Ranch Motion Picture Studios on April 26th and the 27th. friends, it's time to dust off your boots and head on over to the city of Santa Clarita's annual Cowboy Festival. The Old West comes alive. As you walk down the streets of the Melody Ranch Motion Picture Studio, they've been on stop entertainment all weekend with nationally renowned musicians and cowboy poets. Get fitted up with authentic cowboy gear and taste the best cowboy grub in the West. So come on out to the historic Melody Ranch Motion Picture Studio in the rustic hills of Santa Clarita. Santa Clarita is Southern California's entertainment destination. Just minutes from LA, Santa Clarita's year-round weather means you can enjoy year-round fun. Like thrilling coasters and water parks, premium shopping, destination day spas, fine dining, outdoor adventure, 
at major events such as wine festivals, golf tournaments, and the Cowboy Festival. Santa Clarita, always in season. <laughs> ah. Hey, Mike, give me another one. The cost of one more drink, four fifty. The cost of a DUI, severe fines and loss of freedom, causing innocent loss of life, unimaginable. The value of acting responsibly? On second thought, why don't you call me a cab? Priceless. Drinking and driving are not worth the cost. Call a friend or taxi to get home safely. Santa Clarita, May 4th through May 10th is your chance to participate in Pride Week. The City of Santa Clarita is looking for volunteers to take pride in their community to help clean schools, neighborhoods, and streets. Volunteers are needed for a variety of different projects including trash removal, flower planting, and graffiti removal. T-shirts and supplies are provided by the City. Pride Week is a fun way to join your friends and neighbors in keeping Santa Clarita a beautiful place to live, work, and play.